So starting here in line 936 after the full stop, so after meis, and we're starting with vikisti, which is the perfect tense from vincere. So it means you have won uh, and et. The Ausonians, Ausonii, that is the Italians, have seen videre, that's, um, that's not the present infinitive, that's the third person plural perfect. So that's the word which in prose would be viderunt. Um, so the Ausonians have seen victum, now that's a PPP, the having been conquered one, and it's uh, accusative because it's the object, they have seen the having been conquered one, tendere palmas, so this is an, uh, an, an, an infinitive after um, victum, so they, they have seen the conquered one stretching forth, tendere, his palmas, his palms, or his hands, and then he says, Lavinia is your wife, Conjunx. Lavinia is your wife. Um, now, technically, the sense of the Latin is slightly different from that. Technically, the sense is something like, the wife, Lavinia, is yours. So Turnus kind of sees Lavinia as a wife and is saying, you know, it turns out she's not a wife for me, she's a wife for you. Uh, so technically the sense is, the wife Lavinia is yours. Um, but it's also not wrong to say Lavinia is your wife, and that's a bit easier. Um, and then we have ne plus an imperative, which means basically do not. So do not tendere, which basically means to go um, or to, to act. Do not go ulterius, further, that's a comparative adverb, do not go further, odies, with, literally, with hatreds, it's actually the plural of odio, with hatreds, or in English you might say in hatred. Um, and then there's a change of subject after that speech to Aeneas, Aeneas, um, stetit, he stood, perfect of stare, Aeneas stood, Aced in armis, fierce in his arms, in his weapons. Volvens oculos, volvens is a present participle that means shifting or moving his oculos, his eyes. And quere, he repressit his dextram. Repressit means he restrained, held back his right hand, dextra. So that's where we get the word um, repression and repressive from in English, from this, uh, this Latin repremere, to, to hold back. So he restrained his right hand. And then we go over the page to et yam yam que magis. Tantem flectere sedmo. Um, so, and, that's et. And then yam, yamque, literally means now and now. Um, so perhaps a good English translation would be something like at every moment. Um, the speech, sermo, um, coiperat, began, um, to flectere, to turn him, to, to sway him, to persuade him, um, more, magis, as he hesitated, cunctantem. So cunctantem is a present participle accusative from cunctari, the deponent verb to hesitate. So literally, um, the, the speech began to sway the hesitating man more. Or we could say, to sway him more as he hesitated. Uh, so that was happening when, cum, when the unlucky 
belt, the infelix baltius, or the ill-starred belt. Um, now, this word infelix, actually, could have various different meanings. Okay, so it could mean um, unhappy in the sense that it makes Aeneas unhappy to see it, or it could mean unlucky in the sense that it brings Turnus bad luck, or it could mean unhappy in the sense that the image depicted on it is an unhappy image. And we'll talk more about that in class. But basically, um, the, the, the meaning is unhappy or unlucky, and it's a bit ambiguous what that really means. Um, so, when the ill-starred or unlucky belt, um, alto umero, literally that means on the high shoulder. Uh, you could say high on his shoulder or something like that. And I put on Turnus's shoulder. Now, the name Turnus is not in the text, but I sort of added it just to make it clear that we're talking about Turnus's shoulder, not Aeneas's shoulder. Uh, so the ill-starred belt, high on Turnus's shoulder, apparuit, literally appeared, or you could say um, came into view or something like that. Um, or I, I said in my translation, met his gaze, um, and et, um, the, um, where are we, the, the baldric, uh, the kingula, baldric, which basically means a kind of, uh, kind of belt, really, a sort of belt that holds your sword in place, uh, the belt, um, Notis bullis with it, so notus means well known or familiar in this case. I think they're not famous, but they're known to Aeneas. And and bullis are um, are um, studs that you get on a belt. So um, so the the baldric with its familiar studs, ablative case, full serunt. That means gleamed or shone shone out, I put in my translation. And then you kind of have to, you have to translate kingula again. So, the baldric, palantis pueri, of the boy, palas. So, palantis and pueri are both genitive, right? Palantis is the genitive of palas, pueri is the genitive of puer. So, the baldric of the boy, palas, whom quem, accusative case, whom, Turnus, um, had laid low, or had overcome, straverat, pluperfect tense, um, with a wound, vulnere, okay, um, now, uh, with atque here, this actually gets a bit difficult, and I decided to change the translation here after atque. So, atque means and, okay, atque means and, and then what you, what you then have is um, umeris means on his shoulders, gerebat is imperfect. So that means um, he was wearing. Okay. Um, and insigne is something like a trophy. Um, and inimicum means sort of hostile or of an enemy. So I think the best way to translate this um, having looked at the commentary, I think the best way to translate this is to say, um, so the boy palace whom Turnus had um, laid low, uh, or in fact, sorry, so victim here is a PPP, so literally whom having been conquered, having been defeated, Turnus had laid low 
with a wound. And, atque, and then you have to supply a phrase that's missing from the Latin. So something like whose sword belt or whose baldric he was wearing, gerebat, as an inimicum insigne, as an enemy trophy. Okay, so in my translation, I replaced, where are we here? I replaced and he was wearing his enemy's insignia on his shoulders, to um, and whose sword belt he was wearing as an enemy trophy. I think that makes the most sense of the Latin. Um, so, okay, so of the boy palace, whom, having been defeated, Turnus had laid low with a wound, and... And then you supply whose sword belt he was wearing on his shoulders as an enemy trophy. Uh, literally, the Latin is saying whom he was wearing, but obviously he wasn't wearing Pallas, he was wearing Pallas's sword belt. Um, now, again, we have some ambiguity in the Latin because the meaning of inimicus is not clear. It could mean that this is a trophy belonging to an enemy. Or it could mean that this is a trophy that is harmful to its owner. It's inimicus to its owner. And that would be true of this sword belt because it was harmful to Pallas. Uh, he got killed with it. And it's also now going to be harmful to Turnus because it is the reason that Turnus will be killed. Okay. Um, then we have he... And ille is now changing the subject to Aeneas. So he, after, post quam, he drank in, or he had drunk in, how sit, with his eyes, oculis, the memorials, the monumenta, of his savage grief, saivi doloris, genitive case, and the spoils, ex suviasque. That's again a small change that I made in the translation. I changed spoils to the spoils um, because ex suvias is, is another object like monumenta. It's not a genitive uh, like Dolores. Um, he's then described as um, ablaze or fired up, a kensus, with fury, furiis, that's ablative plural, literally with frenzies or with furies, um, ablaze with fury, and et terrible, terribilis, with anger, so ira is ablative singular, uh, with anger, or you might say in his anger. And then you have to supply a word like he said, so dixit or inquit or something like that. And what he says is tu ne. So this is just tu, meaning you, followed by ne, which makes the sentence a question. So are you in dute? Now in dutus means something like wearing or clad in. Um, and here it, it ends in an e because it's vocative, right? Because it, we're addressing the person who is in dute. So are you clad in or wearing the, and takes ablative, the spoliis, right, like clad with the spoliis, with the spoils um, of my men, maiorum, genitive plural, of my people. So are you edipiare, are you to be snatched away? Um, so this is a passive subjunctive, right? Are you to be snatched away? Is it right for you to be snatched away? Should you be snatched away? Something like that. And then mihi here means from me. It's like ah, may. Right? So should you, clad in the spoils of my men, be snatched from me? And then he says... Um, he then says, palace, and palace here is repeated twice. 
which is a bit a bit more difficult to do in English. So in my translation, I said palace it is, palace who. Whereas the Latin doesn't really do that. The Latin just repeats the name. So palace, immolat te, sacrifices you, hoc vulnere, with this wound. So hoc vulnere is ablative. So palace sacrifices you with this wound. And the name palace is repeated. So that's why I, I said palace it is, palace who. Because I wanted to capture in English that repetition of the name. Um, and, et, um, he sumit poinam, that's a, the, the phrase, the phrase poinam sumere means to exact a punishment or exact a penalty. Um, so he exacts the penalty ex scelerato sanguine, from your wicked blood. Right? Uh, and that phrase in English, to exact a penalty, that means that when someone owes you something, you get it from them. You exact it from them. Okay, and then we go into the last three lines. Okay, and we start with this present participle, decanes, which means saying. Okay, so saying this, decanes, hoc, uh, hoc, sorry, hoc is uh, neuter accused of singular, it means this thing. So saying, literally saying this thing, he um, fared vidus, now uh, this is missing from the translation, so you'll need to add that. He violently, something like that, fared vidus, he violently um, buried, condit, buried his sword, ferrum, sub adverso pectore, Literally, that means under, in the sense of, you know, right into, um, Turnus's turned breast, so turned towards the sword. So the, the point is the sword is going all the way in, right? It's turned towards it. So that's why I said full in Turnus's breast. Um, okay. Ast. Now, ast is a kind of poetic word for but, like said. In, sometimes it's written at, A-T. Here it's, there's an S as well. But, um, the limbs, membra, neuter plural, membra are limbs. The limbs, literally the limbs for that man, illi, but you can treat illi as a genitive. So that man's limbs, solvuntur, that means are loosened, um, and uh, this is a present passive, are loosened by the cold, frigore, ablative singular, by the cold. Uh, and I put in my translation, by the cold of death, right? The, the, that phrase of death is not there in the Latin, but I just wanted to clarify uh, what this kind of frigor, what this kind of frigus is. This is the coldness of death. So that man's limbs are loosened by the coldness of death. And, queer, um, with a groan, cum gemitu, with a groan, cum plus ablative, his vita, his life, flees, fugit, um, indignata, that means sort of uh, indignant or resentful, or I, I'm, in my translation I made it an adverb, um, resentfully, and it's feminine because it's agreeing with Vita, so his life flees, uh, um, and fugit, we know it's present tense because the you, um, actually no, sorry, um, yeah, 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 no, that's right, we know it's present tense because the you is short, so his life flees resentfully, sub umbras, literally that means beneath the shades, but I think the idea is more like to the shades sub, the shades which are below. So I put in my translation to the shades below. And that, that is the end of line 952. It is also the end of book 12 and of the IB text and of the Aeneid as a whole. So uh, we'll 
talk about those lines in class, uh, and that will be the end of uh, yeah, that'll be the end of looking at this uh, this text, um, or at least looking at it line by line.